on the back side of your plan of procedure. Okay, second page. Number 11. Okay, number 11 says cut six three sixteenths by five sixteenths finger joints on both ends of front A and back B and ends C. To make the jig for the finger joints, I'll follow the procedures A through J. Okay, now I've basically already gone ahead and, and I've made the jig for you. Okay, so, but let's just go through it here real quick. This is what I did to make the jig. Uh, it says use a table saw with a 3 16 wide dado blade. So um, I took all the inserts out of that dado stack that was back there on the rigid table saw. And I just used the two outer pieces which come out to 3 16 of an inch. Okay, to use the two outer blades. Um, it says screw a 3 quarter by 3 inch by 18 inch, 18 inch board onto the fence of the miter gauge. Okay, miter gauge does what? What operations on a table saw? Is it uh, rip or cross cut? Rip. rip. Okay, so we, we put a board on there. All right. Did you say miter gauge rip? Miter gauge cross cuts. They yeah, said rip. Cross cuts. Okay, miter gauge cross cuts. Right? Not going against it. <laughs> going against it. Cross cut. Yeah, you're going across the grain. All right. Now I have seen, and again, guys, that seems to be a, a that seems to be a, a that seems to be a problem with a lot of people. Okay, and that's probably how most accidents happen on the table saw. All right, Nick. Yes. Can you listen, please, and stop talking over there? Okay, most accents on table saw, it's because you guys are not, it's because students and people at, at their houses or whatever are trying to cross cut with a table saw without using a miter gauge. You've got to support that piece of wood as it goes through, and you can't just butt it up the end grain up against the fence and run it through, okay? What's going to happen? What will happen in, if you don't use a miter gauge when you're trying to cross cut with a table saw? Anybody? It'll kick it back, exactly. Why does it kick it back, Matt? You're right. Because the blade grabs it. Well, it gets, it gets turned a little bit. It'll get sideways just a little bit in there. And as soon as that wood gets sideways, it's, it's, you know, it gets longer, right? You know what I'm saying? It gets longer because this now is corner to corner in between the blade and the fence. And boom, it grabs it and throws it back hard. So you got to use the miter gauge. Let me grab the miter gauge. To keep it straight. To keep it straight, exactly. Okay. So, you know, we got several different miter gauges, but this one is a good one. We put a we put an extension on this one so that it supports you know the, the wood as it goes through and, and basically you just push the miter gauge right past the blade. Okay? And, and you see how this gets cut, that's alright. That supports it. Okay, supports the wood. You guys understand what we're talking about now? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So we basically screwed a board on. We um, we clamped a second board onto that with C clamps and then basically we um, make a cut in the boards with the dado blade. So you basically run those two boards through clamp together. Okay. Then it says uh, cut a small piece of wood to serve as a tongue. And basically a tongue should be the exact dimension as the finger joint. Okay. So what we have here is we have the tongue glued into this outer board, okay? So this is my jig, okay? When you guys, when you guys are back there, be careful because this is a pretty small piece of wood. We don't want to break it off, okay? So we want to be real careful with this. What size is this, Jamie? Uh, three By... By five sixteenths, good. Three sixteenths wide by five sixteenths high. Okay, so we're going to use that for our jig. Now, 
here's where I'm going to, let's see, the next one says, uh, that was, F says glue the tongue of the slot into the second board. The tongue should project out from the board approximately half of an inch. I made that one a little bit longer, okay? Uh, G says posis position the second board in front of the first board. Adjust the tongue exactly 3 16 from the dado blade and secure the boards together with C-clamps. This adjustment will determine the fit for the finger joints. Okay, now I've got, I've got some marks on here. And uh, what you're going to do, I've got uh, two marks over here, and one says, first cut the sides. So when you set this up, we're going to slide that over like this and line those two marks up. Okay? Now, which are the sides? Are those the long pieces or the short pieces? Short. The sides are the short pieces. So you're going to cut those first, all right? You're going to cut the sides first, and you're going to line this mark up exactly. If you get that mark off at all, okay, when you line up those two boards, there's a, there's a, a straight line across those two. If you don't get those lined up perfectly, it's going to throw everything off. Your dimensions are all going to be messed up, okay? So accuracy is very, very important, okay? The next step says, uh, H says use scrap wood for trial cuts and slight lateral adjustments with the jig until the joints fit perfectly, okay? And I've kind of already done that for you, okay? So if you were doing this at home, Matt, what would you need to do? Once you got the jig done, what do you need to do? What did I just read? Matt, what did I just read? His name is Nate. Nate? Nate? Sorry. What you talking to Matt. Yeah. No, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. That's Matt. You're Nate. Uh, what, uh, so if you were doing this at home and you were building the jig, what's it say to do next? What's the safest thing to do next? No. What, what did I just read? Where's your hand out? Where's your hand out? Twice. Where's your hand out? Okay, Justin, <clears throat> tell tell him what I what I just read. Use scrap wood to make trial cuts and slight lateral adjustments with the jig. Okay, so you're going to take some scrap wood and make some trial cuts, but I've already done that for you. Okay, um, and so you don't need to do that step. Okay, uh, the next one says. Uh, I says each time a cut is made, the previously cut portion should be placed on the tongue before the next cut is made. After joints fit perfectly you, uh, in the trial scrap wood, begin cutting the finger joints in the ends of the front and back and the sides using the same settings. Now we're going to change that, okay? So cross through J, just cross through it. And we're going to make a new J, okay? And the new J says, cut the ends first. Okay? Actually, cut the first cut of the ends. First cut. Cut the first cut of the ends. Okay, so the first cut of the ends is right on the end, right? It's a, it's a, uh, instead of being a finger right on the end, or right on the edge, it's basically a kerf, correct? These are the ends, the short pieces. So you want to cut that first kerf on each of the end pieces. That's step J. Write it down so you don't mess up. Okay, so we're making that cut first. Then we're going to cut these together. So stack the ends together, readjust the jig to where it says um, the main side. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna re after we make the first cut. Hello. How are you, guys? I want to introduce uh, Dr. Cabrera. Dr. Cabrera is the superintendent of our school district. 
So let's make him feel welcome by giving him a round of applause. Okay, um, thanks for coming by, Doctor. So we're making that first curved, okay? Then we readjust the jig, so write that down on your notes. Make the first curve on the edge of the, of the ends, both ends, okay? Then write down, readjust the jig, and I'm going to show you in a demo how to readjust the jig to the main side. Write that down. I've got it labeled on the jig, main side setting. And then the next step is to continue putting the kerf on the finger and cutting the rest of those sides, okay? On the on the end pieces, all right? The last step, you don't have to readjust the jig. The jig is already set up and you go ahead and make all of your cuts on the front and back pieces, okay? For your finger joints. All right? So let's, let's review. We set the jig to the initial setting. We cut basically both, one corner of both of these pieces. Okay, and you need to keep them together. You need to remember which way you started so that they stay together. Then you readjust the jig to the main setting, and then we go ahead and make the rest of these cuts on this piece, both, both sides, okay? Then we can go ahead, we don't have to adjust the jig, we can go ahead and make these, okay, with the uh, main setting. Now, why do we have to readjust the jig on the first one? Can you guys think of why you have to readjust that? What's different between the ends and the sides? Now, the length is different, you're right, but what's different as far as how those fingers are laid out? Exactly. They're, they're basically opposite because the one has the kerf on the next to the edge, and this one has the finger on the edge. So that's why you have to, you know, after you make the initial cuts on this one, you have to reset the jig, and then you don't have to reset it for this one because it's already set up to cut like this. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate that on the table saw. Any questions before we go over there? Okay.